What is up YouTube, Johnny B here again today and we are back with the FRS. Obviously it's been quite a while since I've actually gone to make another video on the FRS since the last video that I made when I went ahead and boosted it, you know, gave you guys all the details. So most of you guys are probably here on my channel because of my FRS obviously. So we're gonna finally go ahead and get the chance to run it on the dyno and get some actual numbers because to this day, you know, most of us are all wondering, you know, when you boost the car, are you just gonna get like 260 like most people? Or are you just gonna go for the 300 horsepower like most people do? Uh, just to have, you know, like a nice solid figure. Or are you gonna go ahead and hit it, you know, close to the limits of the stock engine because I did not build the engine. The engine is still completely stock. It's relatively low mileage, so it should be able to handle the boost. But before we go ahead and get into all of that, I wanna go ahead and, you know, just do basically a, a rundown of all of the mods that I've done to it, you know, over these past couple of years to make it to this final state, you know, for the car to be able to handle this much power including, you know, the way we did the suspension and tire setup with also some supporting mods, you know, that will actually help uh, keep the engine safer for the actual turbo build that we did. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and show you guys how it all began. And then after that, let's run it on the dyno. So the biggest question is on anybody's car is how do I get more power out of my car? Most of the time, you know, you're trying to just do a bunch of like simple bolt-ons. So before we even went into boost, I went ahead and did all of that intake header exhaust, had all the bolt-ons and then we went E85 just to get the most power out of the engine that I could before going boost. But then after that, you still, you know, you always want more power. The thing that you decide up doing is going boost. So this car doesn't come boost. So you either decide, you know, do I want to go with a regular supercharger, a centrifugal supercharger or a turbo? Yeah, the Vortec kit. Uh, that's not your traditional root supercharger, so it's, it looks kind of like a turbo, but it's still belt driven. So I know a lot of guys, a lot of the famous guys, a lot of the popular guys have gone with that kit. You know, a lot of them have their engines built. But when I see their power numbers, I just get, you know, confused. Like, why do you spend three to five thousand dollars, even six thousand dollars, even more than that, if they didn't do any of the work themselves? to get, you know, relatively low numbers, you know, close to 300 or sometimes not even 300 and they have, you know, built engines. I don't really trust builders, so I didn't end up going with a with a built engine. Me, myself, I'm not to the point where I think I can leave this engine 100% perfect, so I'd rather not mess with it. I think that the best way to run a car is, you know, with an engine that's never been touched before, an engine that's never been opened and where no one can mess up, because even the top builders out there mess up leave something loose or something like that blows the engine so i just left the engine stock and then i decided to go with a turbo because of you know the limiting factor of the supercharger you can all you can do is change the pulley and then you know when you have the pulley changed out you go to a smaller pulley and you get you know two pounds of boost more not really that much power difference but with the turbo setup you can always you know throw a boost controller like i did to regulate the wastegate and then you just control boost from there you know depending on the turbo on how big you go is the amount the amount of boost you can put into it normally on a stock engine frs you know we've seen a lot of examples of people hitting uh i think 13 and a half pounds of boost even 14 to where it's still within a safe you know margin where as long as you don't push it all the time the engine's gonna, gonna be safe so with this one we're gonna stick it with eight and 10 and 12 pounds of boost depending on the map that i want to be on 12 pounds of boost being the highest i'm going to go even though most people go 13 13 and a half a lot of the people here in arizona go with with that psi just to get you know the desired power numbers but i just want to keep it you know a little bit safer so i'm going with 12. i do have a lot of supporting mods i do have e e54 uh we're probably going to put up put in a different fuel for that day uh, which is like closer to you know actual E85 and just to see how much how much power we can get out of this thing because I want to have an impressive power number for you know putting uh, close to five six thousand dollars of you know the turbo plus all these supporting mods and probably even more with all the handling mods to support you know this amount of power so without further ado let me go ahead and get into you know some of the early stages of the FRS and to the point where it is now Okay, so supporting mods. First thing I ended up doing when I first got the car was just wide body kit because you needed to be wider to fit a bigger tire. Then after that, I went ahead and put bigger wheels and tires, obviously, because you need more meat holding the ground. 
And then in the back on the subframe, I put it, went ahead and put in all polyurethane bushings just so that, you know, there's no twisting. There's going to be no wheel hop when you're launching, stuff like that. We have some traction bars in the back of all the control arms with spherical joints so that there's no bushings that are going to be bending and twisting. Then for power, I went ahead and had an actual header, but I went ahead and removed that for the turbo kit. So that's no longer valid. We have a Cusco catch can. That was a very nice mod that we needed. Went ahead, we needed E85. It's a lot more safer to run E85 when you're boosted. Um, upgraded the, the fans and fan shroud because you need a little bit better cooling. Uh, installed some Cadillac ATSV front Brembo brakes with Hawk pads, you know, because you need that stopping power. And I also did the rotors uh, and Hawk pads in the rear just so you know we have something that's matching with also stainless steel braided brake lines just so you have that extra stopping power you need an oil cooler so i went ahead and got an oil cooler for the turbo because if the, the engine runs really hot when you're boosted so you need something to cool down that engine to keep it in a safe temperature you know especially here in arizona installed header wrap on the on the parts of the exhaust and part of the the downpipe and just so just so we can keep the heat away um, Another thing that I installed was the heat wrap, the gold, reflective gold heat wrap. That way you can get all of the temperature, you know, out of the way, um, just to have everything running a lot cooler. The turbo kit came with a lot of already mods, but those are a lot of the supporting mods that were needed. Uh, you needed a bigger fuel pump, so I went with a DW uh, fuel pump. Don't remember exactly which one. Um, 550cc injectors, just because since you're going to be adding more more boost you need you know more fuel and then went ahead and got a grim speed boost controller just so you can regulate the boost uh, if you want to you know make more power that's always something that is definitely needed another thing that i added was kw suspension with ground control top hats and a ground control truss bar because you need to have you know really good handling if you're going to be pushing that much power uh, you want the car to be stable under load and you know under speed you want it to still be controllable so that was another mod that you needed to have you know to be able to control the power the carbon fiber hood may seem like it's just a visual obviously it's not that much lighter than the original aluminum hood but it's vented the vents actually help a lot with dissipation of heat in the engine uh, it accumulates a lot because of the turbo and in the engine so you can actually see the vapors come out through the vents just giving it so much power you need to be able to control and manage all of the heat so that's a big thing when going boost.
All right, guys, we are finally done tuning. The numbers were incredible. Um, some of the numbers I didn't actually get on video. The, the highest number that I did hit was 396, which is pretty impressive. I was not expecting, you know, that close to 400 with that amount of ethanol content and that amount of boost because the highest we went was 12 because I wanted to keep it relatively safe. I don't want to go too risky. Like I said earlier, a lot of the guys run 13 and a half, you know, to get their power numbers and that's how they run it when they want to race them, uh, which can be a little sketchy, but it's still safe, you know, on the tune when you're tuning it, there's no knock, there's, there's no issues relatively, but if you're going to be running it for a prolonged time, there could be some issues that come up. So 12 pounds of boost is fine. So for that, you know, amount of boost with 70% content, getting 396, you know, that's exactly, that's about 400. So I'm going to be saying it's 400 horses because if I go ahead and up the boost, like everybody else has it at 13 and a half, I'm easily over 400. And that was non-corrected, you know, that's just the dyno. As this, a lot of people correct them, you know, for the ambient and all this, and there's all this drama, which if we corrected it, you know, depending on the corrections, the thing went to like 420 uh, horses with corrections, but we'll just keep, keep it at 390, 396, around there. Um, if I do, you know, up the ethanol content, even on that same pound of boost on 12 PSI, we could, you know, hit 400 easily. Four, four horsepower to get, you know, with 15% more ethanol content is doable. So, I am very excited. Power numbers, you know, I was thinking like 350, so 400, you know, a lot of you guys that actually do follow me on Instagram I already knew that because I had posted it a while ago. So, YouTube video is a little bit late, but here it is, guys. Hope you guys are excited. And the thing is, making so many cool noises we have blow off we have pops i don't know if it's shooting flames because i haven't gone behind the car when it just does ridiculous pops um unfortunately it's kind of random so i can't just you know reenact it and then just make it happen it's just randomly when it happens when it wants to do all these cool noises um but it is very impressive uh first gear boost burns out second gear boost burns out again third gear boost burns out again it's got 255s on it right now which i'll, I'll admit it's kind of skinny for a wide body um they are really grippy tires they are the falcon and zenny's uh rt r 615ks so they're the competition tire with uh 200 thread wear so they are actually pretty grippy so if you guys look around you so let me let me show you guys around follow me look at the ground can you guys tell where we're at this is literally, you know, the end of the road, big circle, all kinds of tire marks everywhere. I wonder what this place can be, right? This is my favorite hoon spot. So you guys asked for it. So looks like I'm gonna abuse the FRS a little bit and wear out, you know, whatever's left of my tire tread, but it's all for the YouTube video, right? So let me go ahead and show you guys that and hope you guys enjoy. 